of the world that makes some people go to bed hungry. This is the African History Club. And my name is Tilly Blackcraster. Today's lecture is going to last nine minutes. And I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate all of you students in class. Now I will mention your names right at the end of the class. So make sure that you stay in class. This is the African History Class. Is everybody ready for the class today? Show my hands if you are not ready for the class today. Okay, so thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now today, I'm bringing you to Ghana. From Ghana, I will take you all the way to London. And then back to Ghana. Today, we're going to tell you a story that you have never heard. This is the African History Class. And I'm most excited to be with you. Now today we're telling the story of Joe Apia. Joe Apia. Now his story is going to mesmerize you. So open your ears and listen with rapt attention. Joe Apia was born Joseph Emmanuel Apia. My producer is going to put up a photograph of Joe Emmanuel Apia. So you get to know who we are talking about today. My brother, my sister, Joseph Emmanuel Apia was born on the 16th of November in 1918. I'm waiting for the photograph. Joe Emmanuel Apia was born on the 16th of November in 1918. He was nine years behind Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah was born in 1909. Joe Apia was born in 1918. This is the photograph of Joe Apia. Now look at Joe Apia. You will see a very studious and serious young man. My brother, my sister, hey, if you miss this story today, you will bite your head off. Joseph Emmanuel Apia was born on the 18th, I beg your pardon, the 16th of November in 1918. Hey, and listen to the interesting thing that happened. His father was called Nana James W.K. Apia, and his mother was Nana Ajua Etienne. They were both members of the Ashanti imperial aristocracy. His father was a schoolmaster, Methodist leader, a traditional nobleman, and he also became the chief secretary of the Asante mine, a position that gave him considerable influence in Ashanti affairs. Apia was educated at Wesley College in Fansipim and the Middle Temple in the UK. My brother, my sister, this is where the story gets thick. His parents were both Ashanti. His father was an aristocrat. You know who an aristocrat is? It's a bourgeoisie. You know who a bourgeoisie is? Oh my God, have mercy. Sally likes the word bourgeoisie. My God, have mercy. Now, an aristocrat is historically associated with hereditary or ruling social class in many states. And they include the upper class, the rich, my brother, my sister. So it's a game of classism. His father was a bourgeoisie. He had money. He was from the upper class, rich. My brother, my sister, this was the kind of family Joe Apia was born into. Now, during his time at the United Kingdom, something interesting happened. He got in contact with Kwame Nkrumah, who was also in the United Kingdom studying, and they became very good friends. He loved the way Kwame Nkrumah spoke his fancy. Kwame Nkrumah loved him so much because this was a man who was embedded in tradition. 
He spoke three with such excellence, Nkrumah wondered if he came from the royal family. Oh gosh. When he told Kwame Nkrumah his history, Nkrumah took a liking for him. Oh my God. Now, whilst he was in the UK, he was involved with the West African Students Union, WASU. Eventually, he became the president of WASU. And interesting things started to happen. He met such other great people like George Padmore, Trinidadian born Pan Africanist, who was also a mentor to Kwame Nkrumah. My brother, my sister, and listen to the interesting thing. Now, Kwame Nkrumah, George Padmore, and even Jomo Kenyatta, who were all mentored by the great George Padmore, decided to form a certain clique. Kwame Nkrumah on one side, Jomo Kenyatta, and Joe Appiah became very close to George Padmore, and they were strongly mentored by him. Now, they were part of the 5th Pan-African Congress in Manchester, representing the West African Students' Union, which was attended by many other future African politicians. Age, somewhere in 1950, Joe Appiah came talking to Kwame Nkrumah. Charlie, I've fallen in love. Oh. He said, falling in love? But why are you frightened? Why are you frightened of falling in love? Hmm? You are about 30 years. He said, no. I have fallen in love. And it's not an easy falling on. What is it? And Joe Apia told Kwame Nkrumah, I have fallen in love with a white woman. And Kwame Nkrumah said, so what? He said, you know, I am a Pan-Africanist. And I am the president of Wasu. We are talking about uplifting African people. Then all of a sudden, I bring a white woman. He said, no, don't be childish, Joe. Tell me. Messi, tell me. You know what? Pan-Africanism has nothing to do with romance. If you have fallen in love with a white woman, just make sure that the white woman is in alliance. The white woman is aligned with the Pan-African values and she would not do anything contrary to your beliefs as a Pan-African. That is okay. Who knows? She could even help with Pan-Africanism. Don't make the mistake that some of our leaders made in the past. He was encouraged by Kwame Nkrumah. He had fallen in love with this woman, my brother, my sister, and her name was Peggy Scripps. Peggy Scripps. When her name was mentioned, Kwame Nkrumah started to shudder. He started to shake, black, 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 like that. This is the photograph of Peggy Scripps. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this woman. It's going to shock you. Now, Peggy Scripps, my brother, my sister, was the daughter of a great politician in the UK. She was the daughter of the Right Honorable Sir Stratford Cripps and also Dam Isobel Cripps, my brother, my sister, and this man known as Honorable Sir Stratford Cripps was a British Labour Party politician, a barrister, and he was also a politician. Producer, find me a photograph of, uh, of, of Stafford Cripps. Stafford is spelled S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D. Cripps, A-C-R-I-P-P-S. Stafford Cripps. Now, Stafford Cripps was a British Labour Party politician, a barrister, and a diplomat. He was such a powerful man. Hey! Kwame Nkrumah said, Eh, I'm not up here. Now, I'm going to go to the upper class British woman. Unsro. He joked about it. But that was the woman Joe Appiah chose as his wife. Immediately, 
Cho appear told Nkrumah, this is the photograph of Stafford Cripps, the father of Peggy Cripps, who later became Peggy Appiah. Now, those of you who read little, little books in primary school, you will certainly remember the name Peggy Apia. Peggy Apia wrote a lot of children's books in Ghana. Today, I'm going to tame myself so I don't go too much into the history of Peggy Apia. You can never finish telling the story of Joe Apia without telling the history of Peggy Apia. My God. Two and a half years later, in 1953, Joe Apia decided to get married and Kwame Nkrumah was supposed to be the best man. Kwame Nkrumah walked up to him and told him, you see, I truly want to be your best man. But you see, George Padmore is here. Me and you are from the same country. Why don't we bring George Padmore in there so that he would rather become the best man? He is our mentor and this is George Padmore. George Padmore came all the way from Trinidad and Tobago and he was a mentor to Kwame Nkrumah, Jobo Kenyatta, and Joe Apia himself. And he became the best man right there at the wedding in 1953. My brother, my sister, once they got married, the following year, something interesting happened. A son was born to them. It means the moment they got married, pa to pa 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 pa. Bam, she got pregnant. And then she gave birth the following year. To Kwame Apia in London. The following year, 1955, more action. She gave birth again to Amma Apia. And then it took them five years to have their third child called Ajua. And then two years later, they had Abana Apia. So they had four children in all Kwame Apia, Amma Apia, Ajua Apia. And Abena Apia, Ajua and Abena Apia. This was their wedding day. My brother, my sister, and watch this photograph well. You see Peggy Apia dressed in her European wedding gown. And our hero for today, Joe Apia, dressed in Kente. My brother, my sister, the following day, the British newspapers had this photo all over the place. Racist headlines all over the place. How the daughter of a great bourgeoisie politician by name Stafford, oh my God, Crips, got married to an African man, my brother, my sister, and he was dressed in such a way that British people wondered. And this is one of the newspaper headlines. And look at it. African says, spirits predict son for white wife. Can you believe this? African says, spirits predict son for white wife. African Ashanti chief, Joe Apia, whose British socialite wife, the former Peggy Cripps, is expecting their first child to be born in London in May and predicted that the baby will be a boy, said Apia. I am a prayer. I made a prayer to the spirits of my tribe who showed me the baby held in the arms of my grandparents. I told my wife who asked me to pray again and find the sex of the child. This time, the spirit showed me the boy at the age of two. Oh my God, have mercy. Remember in those days, there was no technology to tell that a child will be a male or a female. Joe appeared in his kente went down on his knees and poured libation and then prayed to Ochedi and Ponkwame and told to Ochedi and Ponkwame, would we have a child? Ochedi and Ponkwame said yes. And the wife asked him to go and pray again and find the sex of the child. It came out that the child will be born on the Saturday, the same day that we worship Ochedi and Ponkwame. And the name of the child shall be the name of Ochedi and Ponkwame. It shall be Kwame. And through to the West, the British newspapers carried it as you saw there, before the child was born. And when the child was born, it was on a Saturday. So the child was called Kwame. After Ochedi and Ponkwame. Look at the paper, the newspaper. My brother, my sister, ridiculing 
Joe appear, making him look like some lunatic. Look at the headline. African says, spirits predict son for white wife. And look at it. It came to pass. Right from their wedding, racist remarks and racist publications all through. But something positive happened. On the day of the wedding, England had never seen such pomp and pageantry. Everybody dressed in kente. The drums were beating. A tumpan and the rest of them. My brother, my sister. And people were dancing at door. King, 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 no, 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 Oba, oko, oba, boko. Abba. My brother, my sister, it was Adua the whole day. And the whole of England came out to watch what exactly was happening. A son was born just after a year. The following year, a daughter was born. He never had a son again. It was the only child that was predicted. My brother, my sister, and the British newspapers published again that the son was soon going to be taken to his grandfather, the Ashanti chieftain JWK Apia. Six-month-old Kwame Anthony Akruma Ampim Kusi hears about his grandfather's home, even as a child, and is ready to go home. And this is the photograph of the child. My brother, my sister, it was a mystery. Joe Apia stood by his African roots and for his African roots. He predicted clearly, and then the whole of England became frightened at the way that this chief from the Ashanti clan was showing so much of ancestral power. He had four children in all. He and Kwame Nkrumah decided to return to Ghana. Oh my God, the Gold Coast. And they did. Now look at Joe Apia here, and look at his wife. And look at the children in Ghana, all of them dressed traditionally. I wish I could go into the story of Peggy Apia. But to suffice it, when Apia married this woman, everything was okay. She followed this man all the way to Ghana. She naturalized as a Ghanaian and stayed with Joe Apia, never moved an inch and wrote in her will that the day that she would die, she should be buried with her husband. And it happened. They got buried at the Tafu Cemetery. When you go to Kumasi, go to Tafu. They were buried there, the two of them together. Joe Apia died earlier, and Peggy Apia followed several years later. Hey, the story is about to get heavy. I'm telling you. <laughs> my brother, my sister, Joe Apia returned to Ghana. Nkrumah was also here in the Gold Coast. And they started politicking. Nkrumah became the president. Long and short of it all. His best friend Joe Apia was close to him. But Joe Apia became extremely very popular. After Nkrumah became president, very popular amongst the Ashantis. And listen to this interesting thing. He became extremely popular amongst the Ashantis and the guns in Accra. All because Nkrumah took him round and showed him to the people. And he was a man who had so many different terms. One of his most popular terms was Ababase. Ababase. Abase. You want to hear it again? Ababase. Ababase. Abase. My brother, my sister, anywhere he went for campaign, Ababase, and the people will respond, Ababase, Ababase, they will respond, Ababase, and together they will all say, Abase. Oh my God. Joe Apia, 
he became extremely popular. At the point he and Nkrumah started having some disagreements, he labeled Nkrumah as corrupt and overly powerful and pompous. In fact, Nkrumah didn't like that. And Nkrumah knew that he had a lot of following because he actually pushed him into the people. Nkrumah was becoming unpopular amongst the people and Joe Apia was rising. Criticizing Nkrumah for populist propaganda. My brother, my sister, he became very, very popular, Joe Apia. Listen to what happened next. He criticized Nkrumah so much to the point that Nkrumah arrested him and put him behind bars. He locked him up, my brother, my sister, and he was behind bars for so long. Nkrumah imprisoned him for many years. And this was for two reasons. One, for criticizing him unnecessarily. And two, to prevent him from entering into national politics. Apia later joined the National Liberation Movement, the NLM, after he was freed from behind bars. How was he freed from jail? I'm sure you want to hear that. Now, there was a contingent that came all the way from England. The Queen of England and her contingent came over. My brother, my sister, and Nkrumah took them around, showing them the wonderful places and things in Ghana, and then walked into a hospital. And in this hospital, oh, the contingent, the leader of the contingent decided to pick up one little boy and was asking the sick boy, how are you doing? Little did Nkrumah know that this was the son, Kwame, of uh, Joe Apia, who was born in England in 1954. And the mother, Peggy Apia, the son just opened his mouth. Obroniba. This is, this is the son of Joe Apia. My father has been imprisoned by Kwame Nkrumah. This man, this man imprisoned my father. This man imprisoned my father. He is imprisoned my father for nothing. My father is in jail. He's dying. He's sick. And I'm also sick. What? In front of the British contingent. My God. Ha! Huh. Nkrumah quickly whisked the British contingent away. And boom! When they went away, under pressure, Nkrumah had to free Joe Apia. When Joe Apia was freed, he went straight to join the NLM, which was a tribalistic party founded by the Ashantis. In fact, in the courtyard of the Otumfo at the time, and his secretary, leader, and founder, my brother and my sister, aside the Otumfo, was uh, Jesus have mercy. And his son was the Greek minister who is now running for flag bearership of his party. My brother, my sister, Joe Apia joined the tribalistic party. The party wanted to break away from the rest of Ghana and form the Ashanti party. Having failed in naming this country Akan land, so all the Ashantis went to join the party. Hey! But listen to what happened next. Joe Apia, who was the most popular, that Nkrumah himself was scared of his popularity. My brother, my sister, was hoping that they would make him the flag bearer of the NLM. But no, they rather chose Buzia at the end of it all. And when Buzia became the flag bearer, Joe Apia became mad and angry. My brother, my sister, and what happened? Hey, all this while Nkrumah was gone. This was 1969. Hey, you know what happened? He decided to break away from the NLM and the rest of his traditions. And when he broke away, remember this was a member of parliament for Tafo. When he left, the Ashantis came over to him to tell him, Hey, I dear will fear a year what it is. I will see you in your Santinibio, my SU and Nemo. A party way there, a Santifor party. I will say, Who near party more? 
E chile se, un peye ye ye. Uye ni pa boni ni. Ko, usi uye nkrani ni ako. Na usi uye bruni isu ako. Nyimi ya hare wate. And Joe appear. Went away. But the gun supported him. Hey! In his biography, the biography of a patriot by Joe Appiah, find it and read it. He wrote about how the gun supported him. Unfortunately, his own Ashantis didn't. You know what happened? He lost the elections. He lost his seat as the MP. And he was disgraced. And Buzia wrote on. And this is Buzia. He's a Buno man. Or better still, he was a Buno man. My brother, my sister. Hey, he criticized Buzia so badly. And Buzia didn't like it. But he was also bitter that he didn't become the flag bearer. It was rather Buzia. Joe Appiah lost and he went into oblivion. In fact, he regretted that he, he fought so much against Kwame Nkrumah. He didn't know that tribalism would form a center stage in Ghanaian politics. He was so disappointed in his own Asante people. My brother, my sister, he became ill. Oh, my God. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, my God. Hey! Joe Appiah died in Accra after an illness and was buried at the Tafu Cemetery in Kumasi, in the Ashanti region. His widow, Peggy Appiah, bought the whole land my brother, my sister, and bought a space next to her husband and paid for it and said, this land that I have bought, when I die, I want you to bury me next to my husband. Don't bury anybody here. She paid for it. Joe Appiah died. My brother, my sister, but look at what happened. Mm -mm -mm. Hey. She died in 2006. But Joe Appiah died in 1990. His wife died 16 years later. But look at what happened. Hey. Appiah's tomb was vandalized in 2008 by unknown persons. Grave looters thought that there was money. He was buried with gold. After all, he came from the royal family. And the wife had a reason for asking to be buried next to him. So grave looters vandalized the two graves in 2008 after the woman was buried. But they found nothing but bones. Today, my brother, my sister, we remember this wonderful man who wrote autobiography of an African patriot. The man who wrote in my father's house, Africa in the philosophy of culture. Today we remember you, Papa. Why a B? Why a B? You made mistakes. But at the same time, you had your regrets. I'm sure you wanted to see a better Ghana. Papa. Uninyaminko. Papa, uninyaminko. <laughs> Yeah, Papa, Papa, Wafa Pia, Miss Minubago, Wafa, Wafa, Miss Minubago, Wafa Pia, Miss Minubago, yeah, Wafa Pia, yeah, Wafa Pia, Miss Minubago, yeah, Wafa Pia, Miss Minubago, Minubago, Wafa Pia, yeah, Wafa Pia, Minubago. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know the story of Joe Apia, Wafa Apia, yeah, Papia. Missy Minobago. Wafapia, Missy Minobago. Wafapia, Missy Minobago. Fami, 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 Fami,
Oh! Now that you know what to do, be an any or lay a mini or bafe and zunda kagane mezaka yine ye ampa bango bokaya nung, fifi a yanu kaina wo, and I am who a bear den, lele and jima singa bekone, lele and jima singa berry. Oh! It's been the African history class. And today, we have been talking about Ofapia. Tomorrow, we'll talk about his wife. Hey! The story is more picturesque in the interim of Apia. The year. The emperor, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. Yeah. Zabu, zabu. Wee! 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 Wee!